Siblings of this tree, Silver Terminalia or Terminalia sericea, Mohonono, and there's a lot of it on this land. Um, obviously very happy in this habitat. Uh, it's a very useful plant actually, it's got very good wood for making furniture and implements and things like that. And if the tree is, you find them quite often, there's one over there which has got a very straight um, stem, which is not always that usual in this in this environment. Um, it's very good browsing for goats and um, even uh, cows and things like that will browse off this and get good nutrition. And then its flowers uh, are very good forage for bees. So it's a multiple use plant and it thrives in this environment. Um, so it's, it's a goodie to have around. And it can just, it seems like it can be managed quite intensively as well in terms of we've been able to prune it quite heavily um, while we're trying to open up some of the areas. And it looks like you can coppice it as well to some extent. And so in this little area, there was, there was just a bunch of the seedlings which are popping up um, in the swale, which um, it would be interesting actually to forage around here and compare what the natural recruitment in the undisturbed areas is versus in the swale where we're getting that added moisture and all that stuff. Hmm. Yeah, there's some little babies here. So I think those are coming up from seed. They could be coming up off the roots, but um, I, I think looking at how they're distributed, I think they're from the seeds. Tips, I'm glad you're wearing your gumboots, man. And then, what happened? Did, did the cover crop planting not happen here? No, it did. Yeah, it did. How weird, eh? Why nothing here? Oh, uh, maybe it's the era. Hmm. Very strange. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Ancient aliens. Yeah. Why do you call I don't know this? why. I'm, there's just something about that that's. I'm not sure who that is or why, but um, it's also kind of interesting. It's obviously not a very happy plant because it's getting eaten by these beetles or caterpillars. It's been savaged like lace. And that's usually an indication that that plant was stressed before. That's why it's, a, it's vulnerable to <coughs> being eaten like that. This one, we see it in here, you see it. You look at it, you look at it. Was but I don't know the woman's mother would talk. I find those so beautiful, they're just very pretty and like you said that some grass are palatable, some are unpalatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's obviously some grasses are more palatable than others. Yeah. And some of them are more productive than others, yeah. right? Which is based on their growth form and I guess also the, the, their, their particular qualities in terms of the nutrients that they have in their leaves and how long some of them hold their nutrients after the, the plant has dried out. Others lose most of the nutri nutrient value as soon as they dry up. Those less, uh, less nutrients those are those are unpalatable. Those are palatable ones, highly nutrients. Yeah, I mean palatability is also about how wow. how much do the the animals like to eat them, which is also about are they very 
are they soft and easy and yeah. and gentle to eat for uh, uh, you know for higher reward or is it like do the animals have to you know they, they say in in Afrikaans you eat with long tanda which means you eat with long teeth yeah so and you're like oh in so when i say hey we go ja ga meno a malele la gore me go sometimes ele without taste food untestable food say ah this food is this means man it's not good but let me eat it for so that i can survive for what i say hey i don't like this food mo di ja ga meno a malele mr anderson how do you call it Menu a meleli. What does meleli mean? <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 it's just an expression that I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, I don't like, like it. Maybe you are. But menu get like, teeth again. Yeah, yeah menu get teeth. So a <laughs> meleli. Or are you? It's an ex, it's expression. expression that yeah. your teeth now grow longer because you yes. don't want to eat that. Yeah, eat with longer tongue. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 So the Afrikaans phrase, maybe they stole it from Swahili. Yeah. Say yeah. no. This food, I like. What? Say let's say no. What to eat? Uh, let, let, somebody. Yeah. Uh, somebody said no. Yes, the food, but it's, it's untastable. This food yeah. is not tasty. It's well. like you don't want your tongue to be involved in that yes, eating experience. Yes, but let's me yeah. eat it so that I, I, so I can show him. You're going to chew yeah. and swallow. You're not going to yeah. try and taste it. <laughs> so that's the unpalatable species are like that. The animals, eventually, if there's nothing else to 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 graze, yeah, they will eat that plant. Yeah, but they will not select to eat it yes. in preference. So that's where these grazing the 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 high intensity short period the point there being if you do grazing unmanaged what they'll do is they'll come and eat this one because it's this softer leaf the broader leaf easy soft nice and palatable right they will and when they just go mom mom in a short period they're going to get this whole all of that food right now i'm looking for something which i would say is probably less palatable that quick yeah, yeah. is it you see this one so look at this spike yes this spike. yes this, this triandra right yeah yeah so now this plant much more fibrous yeah right much thinner smaller leaves yeah much more stem to leaf ratio yeah and very sparse there's not much there's not much biomass here yo and for the same bite there versus here there's more reward in terms of the volume of food the ease of of eating it the the nutri nutritional value of eating that so when you compare these two you would say this one is less palatable oh okay the palate is the mouth yeah so oh. palatable mouthable you know less enjoyable almost less likely to be eaten yeah that is in the grazing zone we found those palatables remaining when there's those cattle or sheep or whatever mm -hmm. they clear all the exactly. palatal crosses yes. this and then they group. leave these yeah and that's why we call them decreaser and increaser species oh. the the increasers because when when you've got poor it's under poor grazing management what's going to happen this one is going to increase because the plant the the, the animals will avoid it yeah they'll eat yeah. that one and they'll leave this one and this, this one, one seeds will the spread. next season there's more of this oh right? but this one is less productive agir yeah so the point being that happens when you are not forcing the animals to still graze this yeah when you get them under pressure where this one is getting grazed okay and that one is not being overgrazed that one actually takes over because that one is adapted to being grazed yeah this one is adapted to not being grazed so when this one is is put under pressure grazing pressure it doesn't re it it grows slower it it doesn't thrive under those conditions it doesn't recover as well from grazing as <coughs> that one does so often we destroy pastures not by putting too many animals on or over grazing as such as i think the way most people think of it is it's too and too many animals and they've eaten it too much it's it's more about there was not they actually more in those cases like what's going on around us the animals have got access there whenever they want so they come through they find that one's recovered a little bit they just hammer it again they just bypass this every time they walk through there 
they don't touch this. But they're always looking for that one. So that one never gets a chance to recover. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah, that is why we, we realize that. And we so, notice those things. And that's the problem, is that long period where there's no rest. Yeah. Uh, sorry, there's no um, grazing so that that one can recover fully. Yeah. Okay. Then you have high impact, heavy, lots of animals in a small area grazing very intensively for one day whereby you've got a lot of animals, much more, st many more animals close together than you would be comfortable with in the current grazing practices. You'd say, ah, guys, we've got too many animals together. We need to spread them out. Yeah. The point being, you keep them together, they're going to graze that place flat, flat, flat. Yeah. And then they're going to move. And you're not going to let any animals come in there again until you see that the, the, the palatable is, species have recovered. This is the use. When yes. you do that, you end up with much more of this over time. And this starts to become much less. And you start to cover the soil much more. But if you have some uh, cattle ranges, or let's say that we have a paddock, this is where you can control this. It divides your, yes. your farm or range. Yes. So, yeah. But in the free zone range like this? Impossible. It's practically impossible. impossible. Yeah. Uh, unless everybody is not impossible. Sorry, it's a bad word. It's very unlikely or very difficult because what you then have to do is you need to get everybody who's got animals in those uh, communal areas, everybody who's got animals in that area has to come together. You all have to have the same understanding and you all have to agree we're going to manage our animals in this way together. And you can do it without fences. You can do it with, with herd, herdsmen who remain with those animals through the day. And, it, and they keep them together. So it's like your herd, your herd, my herd, his herd. We've got some guys who are going to keep them together. Now the whole village's cattle is keep, kept together in one big herd. And you <coughs> systematically move those animals together in order to achieve this thing. Where there's not like now Dipsy's animals are, yeah, free, all of us are in, but Dipsy's out. Now our animals are grazing in that way. But instead of that land resting behind that grazing, Dipsy's animals have still got access there and are now still hammering the, 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 the decrease of species um, and preventing that recovery. That's a problem. So it's one of those where if everybody's in, you can, you can improve it. But if there's just one or two people who, who are out, it's very difficult to, to use that system. Simply. Yeah, the system we used nowadays. So, uh, yeah, this free grazing, it's, yeah, a, free it's, grazing. A, lo it's a slow train wreck, guys. And it's a yeah, slow disaster. You can't disaster. manage the, those pastures or the mm. areas truly yeah. because... They will be degraded. We open the crawl, spread leaf, yeah. going out. Yeah. Even we can't drive them as we used to exactly. do before, drive them <laughs> when the sunset approach. Mm. But nowadays we just, oh, go. You just leave them there. Leave them and then there. at Easter you go and try and find your animals. Ha, ah, we poo so you now go and start searching for your animals. You see yeah. your animals twice a year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, the yeah. adaptation of no, no, nowadays we can, the head boy didn't look after those kettle. But now when I grew up, I used to drive them for the certain area where their grass are palato or the plenty of the grass so that we can manage them. As we said last year, I remember when you say earlier that our grand grandparents, we have to copy, we have to, what do you call, adapt what they yeah, did here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You have to practice, you have, you have to transfer the, 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 the knowledge to the generation so that they keep them. Like, you know, this, this, the, 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 the certain cultures, like, uh, you know, Asian guys, like we call them Makula. Mm -hmm. They have that. A quite cultured yeah. that they have adapted for almost all the years mm. in Botswana. You can see them in the bars, you can see them anywhere, <laughs> but us, we are all over, you see. So this is some of, I, mean, I think Africans, they don't have that control nowadays. Everyone do what he wants to do, mm. anyhow, anyway. Yeah, and I like what they did, especially when I used to see those things in the videos. In some countries like mountainous country like Ubu, Mongolia, Tibet, what those mm. are they had ships. Those guys, they, as I said, they put small a certain area. They drive their ships to that area where there's a plenty of grass or water. Then they move back to the 
where they come from mm -hmm. to allow that area to be recovered last to, mm. to the next re rain. Yeah. Here, oh no. Yeah. There's no rest. There's no rest. And it's a slow destruction of the fertility yeah. and the, the ability of that land to support. I've had many conversations with Botswana who say their grandparents or great grandparents used to have much more, there was much more livestock, many, many more cattle. Now that could just be, ah, in my day it was better. But also in those days there, were, there was a whole level of society, young boys, that's what you did. This was before school and before the, the, the current economic, socio-economic situation. The point being that there were always human beings who had knowledge and energy were always with those animals. Yeah. Moving them, moving them, moving them, keeping them together coordinating the grazing activity and managing with that hu those huge herds having this intensive mob grazing impact and then leaving it to recover and at the same time don't forget there's the input of all that manure in a concentrated area and then being left so again what we were talking about lots of manure going down the animals are coming through they're grazing they're trampling they're manuring behind them and then you've got those cattle egrets with them helping to remove the ticks and the, the, the fly larvae and then you've got your dung beetles who come in and take that manure straight down into the soil. So you can sustain a lot more animals if you're keeping them together and moving them around oh, like yeah. this than even fewer animals but are always spread out thinly everywhere. Okay. It, that degrades the landscape. And the problem is that it's happening quietly every single day. It's not a big disaster that we see and say, oh, it's a disaster. We must do something about this. We now believe that that's how animals are kept. That's you why, know? that is why. In, we think that that's yeah. normal and it's productive. Yeah. It's not. Every single generation, we can support fewer and fewer oh and fewer gosh. animals. So the land becomes poorer, but we as individuals become poorer as a result as well. And we can't understand standing where we are. How did my grandfather have a herd of 250 head? How? I couldn't do that now. No, because the grassland has changed. Yes. Because that 250 head of cattle, when it was managed correctly, was, able, was creating the conditions which next 10 years, maybe you could have 300 head. Yeah, even, yeah. even the, there are some the, challenges, climate changes. Yeah. I, yeah. I have to admit, I'm personally not so motivated and excited about the climate yeah. <laughs> change impacts yeah. because I think we talk a lot about them yeah. and I think it's disempowering. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's helping us we have, we have address to... the issues yeah. that we actually do have control over or influence over. Oh. I believe that this is my personal opinion, okay, yeah. based on some knowledge, knowledge. but an observation. We have, there's very little that we can do to address climate change. Yes. Okay. If it's happening, then my understanding of it is it's a system which is in motion. It's on a scale where our individual impacts are now relatively meaningless, certainly in our own lifetime. However, there's a lot that is going on that we're blaming on climate change and we just say, oh, it's climate change. Yeah, that's that's like the this. solution. Uh, and yeah. then it's like the attitude always comes with that. Well, there's nothing we can do. And it's like, well, yeah, there's probably nothing we can do about climate change itself, but there's a lot we can do about these, the, 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 the supposed impacts of climate change, whether they're from climate change or not, is kind of, in my mind, debatable. And in some cases it is, some cases it isn't. But the short to medium term reality is that you actually have an impact on, on it and you can change it. You can, you can positively influence the, the local dynamic. Um, and, and you can kind of put climate change aside. Well, that might be happening, but we can still do these things. Yes. And they can still have positive effects. Um, and certainly these grazing management systems, you can do it to, for, for a climate change agenda and you can, you can use that, that's fine. But it's also got very practical, measurable, um, effects in the medium term on, on immediate productivity. Yeah. 
it doesn't need to have a climate change aspect to it yeah. necessarily for it to be worthwhile doing.